Hi, um, welcome everyone to the Screen Composers Guild of Ireland presents the music of normal people or normal people music, which I quite like. Uh, firstly, the, the Screen Composers Guild of Ireland is an industry organization which represents professional composers for screen who work delivering music to film, TV, video games, animation, any kind of media production and we advocate on behalf of screen composers and as a group uh, we aim to improve the, the, the skills and knowledge and share experience um, and make Ireland a destination for great music for screen. So I've invited some of our members on today because I was uh, impressed with I guess the size and breadth of the music department or the amount of people that delivered music into normal people. So we have the composer, Stephen Rennix, who's um, coming in from his studio in Dunleary. We have Kieran Byrne, uh, who's a mixer. We have Juliette Martin, who was music supervisor. Sarah Lynch, who worked with uh, Stephen Rennix. In, she's a composer as well, and also did arrangements and performances. And lastly, Kathleen Flynn, who's coming up from somewhere near, a farm near Newry, I think, um, who did the role of music editor. So I'm going to invite you all first to talk about your roles on the in the music department. Um, but firstly, wow, did any of you anticipate normal people was going to be such a phenomenal worldwide success? I mean, I'm sure at the beginning of it, you couldn't have anticipated that pretty much the global population were being forced to stay at home and watch television when it was aired. <laughs> but um, first of all, I guess, um, how, like, how, Stephen, how, how, did you, did you see that? Did you kind of anticipate uh, <clears throat> No, um, I, I don't think you can. Uh, I think, uh, you just assume it's going to do well because the quality of it was so good. So at the very beginning, I knew it was a really good project because of the people who were involved in it. Um, but I just don't think, I think something like that happens probably once, once in a lifetime, because it just happens. Those, I think those things happen. Uh, a lot of things have to align for something like that to happen. But when, the, when, when they do and you get the opening, I think this stuff has to be very, very good, you know, because I think even if, if it wasn't good, people w would watch half of it or would watch one or two episodes. But I think, um, I, look, when it happened, you're surprised it happened, but when you realize the, 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 the effect it's had or the uh, plot it's, it's getting, you understand why, because it deserves it. It isn't undeserving, you know, but it's rare that things, it's rare that things that deserve praise and acclaim actually get them these days. You know? Okay. So I, I definitely, I think, you know, I, I think I found that because I was really close to it, I had this sort of, I was unable to to sort of make a judgment on whether it was sort of good or bad. I was just so deeply involved in it. And then talking to Maggie, my co-supervisor beforehand, she's like, I think this is this is really gonna gonna hit big. And I guess she has experience working on bigger productions and but you just never know. But it was really insane. The the weeks afterwards were amazing and it's it's been fantastic yeah. how it's resonated. So you were music supervisor on it so could you give us a short description of that role? And Yeah so I worked with Maggie Phillips who I mentioned an amazing music supervisor based in the US and she's done a lot of Hulu productions and um, yeah I was involved basically from script set stage right through to the end of production and the role was sort of twofold. One was on the creative side collaborating with Maggie and suggesting tracks for specific scenes and you know in that part you're working directly with the editor and with the directors um and and then on the other side is which is which was my responsibility solely was negotiating all the um licenses so clearing all the tracks and there was a huge amount of um commercial music so i think there was between 70 or 80 tracks that i cleared and you, you know that's finding who owns the rights negotiating them and, and and sort of managing the budget in that respect. And then I was liaising with Catherine, the producer, wonderful producer, kind of overseeing the, the budget side. So yeah, 
that was, right. that was probably it. And, yeah. and Kathleen, would you have worked then with Juliet a bit? So can you describe what the, the role of a music editor is? In this particular situation, it was so, uh, so much music heavy that I worked very closely with Juliet to make sure that um, we had everything documented as far as what was being used, what version, uh, what the edits were. Um, so in that respect, um, that was part of the job. The other part of the job was doing the editing to match the, uh, in this particular case, the film editor and the director had very specific uses of music, source music, that really played a vital role, I think, in the success of the show. It was so sensitive. It was so sensitively shot. The source music was perfect. And Stephen's music was just phenomenal. So uh, that was my role, basically, was just keeping everything kind of, uh, you know, lined up, making sure that everything was to the stage uh, and everything was documented. Cool. So kind of, again, semi-technical, semi creative yeah in this particular situation each show is different but in this situation it was very much 50 50 i'd say okay, cool and so then i go to you kieran uh you would have assumed did you pass music on to kathleen so your role was mixer yeah so i, I well, what would happen is i'd get a call from steve saying okay we're ready we've got this one i think and then <laughs> You know, we can we can send stuff over the internet, but generally what we'd do is I'd go down to him with a with a hard drive and because it was nice to meet people. Wasn't exactly. It? Yeah. <laughs> we we we'd probably chat for an hour and a half and then maybe transfer the stuff and it'd be a question of, you know, okay, this is here and this is there and don't use that and this but that was basically it. So then I would just work away on that at home and uh transfer the stuff to Kathleen after that. So Kathleen and Steve Fanningham would get a copy of everything from me. Um, at that point, Steve was busy working on the next queue because everything was under pressure at the time. So there was quite a lot of late, <coughs> late days, long days in the first batch of stuff. And between Lenny and Steve, just trying to get what the actual tone for, you know, some of the instruments were, especially pianos. I think that was, you know, Sarah had a bit of an influence on that one there. So, um, and then then we just kept going because I mean we we finished two days or a day before everything got restricted so it was mm -hmm. uh it was very tight time wise and then it was out you know <laughs> so yeah yeah that's amazing so you're right up to the right up Pretty to much, the, yeah, yeah. the broadcast date really. <clears throat> so Sarah then what was your role and hi I think I took here and a lot of chatting <laughs> with Stephen yeah and, um, <laughs> A lot of transferring of files. Um, no, don't I, underestimate the chatting, by the way. <laughs> Very important. I loved it. I missed them. Um, no, uh, with Steve, I would flesh out some of the cues. I would do some arrangement, um, and I would perform a lot of the uh, some of the piano cues. So I was totally delighted, totally excited to be asked to come come on board. Um, so, like Steve always had, a, he always had a firm idea though of what he wanted. Anyway. Yeah. But there was a freedom there for me as well to, to lend some extra instrumentation or add my own, um, you know, my own colour, I guess, to some of his cues. So it was really, really exciting and so much fun. Yeah. Cool. Well done. So, Steve, to you, you were the composer, the, um, I suppose, the, the, the originator of the original music. Um, and you'd worked with Lenny before. Yeah. Like, how did you how did you find this experience compared to some of the feature films that you've done with Lenny and well I try, <laughs> let's just say I was very pleased to have a break afterwards uh, <laughs> it, it was I some when I went home after I think I literally gave I think Kieran came down to the studio handed over the last of the cues and went home and my partner Dee told me that uh, we just got in, uh, Leo had just announced we'd gone into lockdown and I was just this sense of euphoria. <laughs> I was kind of like, what, what I, you mean I can't do anymore? Uh, yeah. But no, I mean, to be, to be serious, it was, it was 
I mean, it's an interesting thing listening back and seeing people, because I haven't spoken to Kathleen for, for ages. Uh, and it's an interesting thing because in a way, when you read the list of people who are in the, in the music department, it can seem like a very, uh, that we all got together a year ago, met in a room, had a team talk. It just doesn't work like that. It, it, it yeah. kind of, all film production is, is uh, or every, every project is a startup effectively. And yeah. so there's, diff there's different rules mm -hmm. for every production. And I know Kathleen and I and Juliet met probably a year ago. Uh, yeah. in, a, in a cafe in town because we were talking about doing this and um, and I, I know that at the beginning Kathleen was so eager to find out how we were going to go and how we were going to proceed and I just remember it was being awful because all I could say to Kathleen was I, I don't know I, do, I just don't know yet because what I'm doing is I'm all the time reacting to what the gathered materials that Lenny and Nathan the editor are getting and then showing to me. And so in a way, I don't know what's gonna, what is gonna be coming out of my first reaction to this. Mm. Um, we didn't know at that stage if it was gonna be orchestral, we didn't know if it was gonna be electronic, we didn't know if it was gonna be just acoustic instruments or, um, so, so in a way, Kathleen was kind of in a holding pattern all the time, waiting for me to be feeding stuff. And, and the problem was initially, uh, Episodes one and two, I think episode one, I, I checked, I think there was about 13 different deliveries. So 13 different right. sets of cues for episode one, because we were looking, we were trying to establish. Uh, tone. Yeah, the no. tone, the tone and the no. feel. And so, so that, that stuff is really important. And in a way, if you get that, you spend a lot of the time I'd say half the energy of the whole series was spent on episodes one and two. Uh, yeah. and, and so once you get that, then things start to flow quicker. But it's very difficult. You know, it's, 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 it's a process where all the time I'm generating the stuff. And then I know there's a kind of chain afterwards. So there's the, the pressure to produce it, to go to Lenny, to see if Lenny is liking what's going on. Uh, he might like something, but he might want something else to be worked on. So then I'm trying to work out whether I take this cue, which is kind of okay. Do I pass this on to get more work done on it? So using up valuable energy in a way, or do I, while I'm working on something else? So, so it's a very pressurized um, system in a way, working on a TV thing where, you know, there's 12 episodes. Um, so, so this is my way of saying thank you to everybody who I worked with because everyone was, and listen, I know I watch these things and I can think, yeah, yeah, look, they're all slapping each other on the back. And they actually, <laughs> actually, what often happens is you do work, you work on stuff and then you don't see each other. You don't see people until the next thing or where you, when you work again, you know. So uh, it was an incredibly supportive environment to work in, the music department, because um, to be able to phone people, to be able to talk to Sarah, who is an incredibly talented composer in her own right, uh, and to be able to trust that I can send something to her to orchestrate or to add something to, or to put some of her magic on uh, and not worry about that and not have to, in a way, quality check that before it comes back uh, is such a privilege. And again, you know, I would know that Kathleen would be in the line there. If, if I'd missed anything, if I'd missed something, if there was a, a technical thing, if there was whatever, I would know there'd be all, that there would be a chain of support that that could get fixed. And then Kieran Byrne, who's a, you know, an incredibly experienced, and I'm going to really enjoy this, a veteran, <laughs> the veteran engineer at this stage. <laughs> oh, veteran, yeah. <laughs> um, to, have, to have his ears, uh, which regularly saved me because uh, the system I was working on was overloaded at one stage. And there was just these glitches, these tiny little uh, digital, things which I thought I got rid of or whatever and then Kieran would come in and he'd just do that slightly concerned but very nice parental thing of going oh I think I might did you did you maybe miss one whatever and so it was great to have uh his years of experience and look it's 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 a fantastic um system in a way to have a music department like that it's not always the way because obviously these things depends on, de depend on budget um, anyway, sorry, I'm talking too much. So. 
<laughs> no, but it's funny, actually, no, it's funny, Steve, your point about things evolving across, because I remember, you know, first chats about commercial music and we kind of anticipated maybe 12 tracks. Mm. Um, and <laughs> that was the time last year, I know, and it just ended up kind of with what 75 so wow. yeah you just don't know you know things evolve and it's yeah. great yeah you just have to kind of run with how that goes um and the other thing was to have Kathleen was amazing because there's a lot was a lot of music in each episode and she's like a second set of eyes going I think I hear a tiny bit of music under you know that bit and and so when you're clearing you've got to make sure absolutely every bit of music is is completely licensed and it's really um, a great comfort to have somebody else kind of overseeing that as well or helping with that. Yeah. So yeah, a luxury. Yeah. So and I good. have to say a part of my excitement when I first met Steve was when I was in the USA, I was a huge fan of Steve. Stevens, sorry. <laughs> I just watched his uh, room before I came over from the US and I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe I get to work with you, you know? So I was just really excited. Really nice. so, Thanks. Uh, Thank you. Great stuff. And, and Stephen, um, how did you get to the tone then? So you talked about that at the beginning, not knowing whether it would be orchestral or electronic. And like I, what, I, what I found watching normal people, it's stunning. It's like a, a really beautiful piece of art and incredibly emotional, but it's like a character study of the space between people it's a better it's you know how do you yeah. how do you give a, a musical tone to a relationship in a way I, that travels so so far but yet is so intimate for conversations yeah well, I look <clears throat> I don't think there's 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 nothing scientific about this it is often sitting here in the studio in silence watching the pictures uh and trying and you know i've said this before being really scared that you're gonna really mess this up that you you know there's nothing there or um and and, and i think you just start trying things um there was temp you know which is you know it's just the way it's done these days is that editors and directors work with temp music um it's still it's 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 prescriptive in lots of ways because you know in a way <clears throat> you know the way that the editor and the director are thinking by the music that they have on it already so <clears throat> so in a way what you then have to try and do i think is to find something in the vein in, in that vein something similar and be working on that and trying to give it your own take or your own feel but at the same time, what you're trying to do is maybe come up with something that does the same work, but from a completely different, uh, using, a, using a different way. And, and, and the problem in, with that is, in a way, you're then slightly dividing your energy. Um, so, you, you know, you're kind of, and, and on something like this, where there's, look, by, but by no means, one of, the, one of the wonderful things about working with uh, Lenny and, uh, and Nathan, the editor, is, the use of music is incredibly good and it's really they don't you know there's never wall-to-wall -wall music and there's a real um pressure i think from um tv and whatever to have music all the time so to actually start you know we always start from a position where you, if you don't need music you don't have music okay. uh, but on this there, there is a kind of commercial reality around having that tracks in having all that and we were aware of that so we kind of felt we front load in a way the first few episodes there's not as many needle drop tracks in it because we had to establish the world with the sound and and i i you know i think the big thing uh which or one of the things which i was thinking about all the time when i was trying to write the music was the breathing of these two young people and just that sense that when you feel that falling in love or when somebody or something excites you in a way, your heart beats faster and you breathe faster. And in a way, it's all about your breath, you know, and that kind of classical notion of you are only the breath you have in a way. So it, in some ways, there, through a lot of the tracks, there's a feeling of the rise and fall of breath. And I think um, if I had to say one thing that informed the music, it would be that sense of breathing. And I don't, you know, it's very, there's a very short step from here to the notion of heavy breathing during you know because 
uh, yeah. you know, it's obviously a series which there's an awful lot of sex in, and I think it's so beautifully done. And obviously, it was something to be very had to be treated very um, actually reverently. That's you know, I've actually felt there was there needed to be a reverence, <clears throat> excuse me, a reverence around it, uh, yeah. be, because the, you know the idea that it would be salacious or that it would be uh in any way pornographic which the series has been accused of which is just it doesn't surprise me but it just slightly shocks me that it's it is it's anti-porn it's anti-pornographic this is just yeah. about to you know and i think it's 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 extraordinary and i think it's extraordinary to see that the sharing out of that um you know in in, in the roles and to see it's lovely to see uh, a naked man lying beside a naked woman on, on, on television and uh, you know and it's not just the normal thing of seeing the woman naked or whatever and I think that's a, a, a slightly seismic uh, thing which probably hasn't been spoken about um, that that's a quite a those beautiful almost Adam and Eve images of the two of them um, which I which I found beautiful and, and no wah wah guitar and absolutely no wah wah guitar yeah well, <laughs> I tried. I tried using the Wawa, but Lenny completely unreasonably said, "No, I don't." You know, I tried to go to Wawa. Yeah, but no. well, well, I really thought what what I what moved me really was that it was looking at this, you know, stage of life mm. and that time of discovery. But it was very faithful to their. It wasn't condescending or patronizing, true. or yeah. you know, it felt like it was very true. And I guess that's that's. Um, the writer and the director, but also the music, that the music can also be, like you say, either, make, you know, kind of lean on the uh, the generic viewpoint or or lean on on some aspect. But I found the music was really helpful to me as a viewer in making me, you know, be there with them um, or be at that stage in life. So, and, and Juliet, you were then, so the, the music supervisor, uh, as you were talking about there, brings in the tracks. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this panel was because it is such a huge international um, showcase really for Ireland. And all too often we have not had Irish music department or Irish composers involved. All too often these shows go off to, a you know maybe a, a partner funding territory mm -hmm. so for me again as a viewer I was really happy that there was an Irish music supervisor on board because I know that you brought in some of the Irish tracks by Irish artists that wouldn't have probably been visible to a non um, Irish resident music supervisor or somebody who's not familiar with the indie Irish scene which at the end of the day there's a huge indie Irish scene. Yeah I suppose the other things that I'd previous productions that I'd worked on were very much in that kind of indie Irish vein and I would yeah. sort of have dug quite lower budget productions I would dug quite deep into that world and I think it was also important just to have these these characters live in Ireland and whilst they listen to huge international artists, you know, like Frank Ocean. There was also lots of Irish music. I really wanted to use, rather than use library, I just wanted to use Irish music that I felt potentially young Irish people might listen to. Um, so, so there's a lot of the, the kind of background party stuff is Irish. And then there's some really nice features, featured kind of Irish music. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a, there's a, uh, the closing of seven where connell's been beaten up and he goes to marianne that's, that's um, an artist the shay or they're a band and they're they're not well known and i kind of had that track in mind right from the beginning and it was just yeah it worked really well it was just it, it's really gratifying to be able to feature a smaller or lesser known irish irish act so yeah, and i did feel like that was that placing a or ending ending episodes on a, on a big feature usage where it closes out over, yeah. over because it's quite a you know fashion thing as yeah. well and yeah it was really well used in this and then it didn't it didn't happen in all episodes but I was impressed that um the day and um I think you closed with Annie Mika Anna, Anna Mia, yeah Anna Mika yeah I mean that was really kind of there was a lot of discussion around that cue because it's the first sort of big needle drop it's the end of episode one and we kind of wanted to 
I suppose, reflect on what had just happened. They first got together and I remember um, there was a track in there that was was working quite well, but the lyrics were a little bit on the nose. And I remember Lenny saying, oh, I just want something that sounds really, really fresh and female vocal and Irish. And so Maggie and I both went off and, and put together playlists and separately. And it's funny because we both came back with with Anamika tracks, different tracks, yeah. but there was obviously something in in the quality of her music and in the tone of her voice that sh that was right for for that particular usage. And it's been incredible. It's funny because I just clocked. I had a quick look before the series was broadcast, and I think she had sort of like 15, 20,000 streams. And I just checked before we came on, and it's it's two two and a two and a half million streams now. This is on Spotify and yeah. um, listening, there is um, a Spotify playlist. Um, I think Ray, there it is. It's on one of the screens, the Normal People official soundtrack playlist, which is Pink, and it includes some of Steve's uh, score. There is another Spotify playlist, there we go, which is the Normal People original score from Stephen. So please go to Spotify and have a listen. Um, I think it's always, it's always great to listen to the tracks out of the context as well. And it's a great way to find new music. Um, but well done. I, I mean, it, it just, to me, it was really, really brilliant to have that level of, I think it was what, 11, 12 Irish artists tracks included on the soundtrack. More, I think. I think it could be maybe 20. I don't know, a lot. Yeah, a lot. And then to, but they're Irish, but they also stand up to kind of the other tracks, the bigger tracks that are there. I think, you know, that's, that's important too. Cool, and, and I was going to talk to Sarah. So, um, did you feel that that there's and um, can you have and this is to Steve as well and and to all of you, can you ha express an Irishness through contemporary film score? Like, do you think through um, so unless like not doing an overtly traditional Irish score, can, is there an Irishness to the sound, or did you feel? that that's important in telling the story, which is based on all these like, you know, Street uh, Strand and Trinity College and um, the, the particularly Irish activities of forcing your girlfriend to watch a GAA match. <laughs> 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 or, you know, hanging out in the middle of a town square talking about the devs or um, like, do you, did you feel that you were con that 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 was important, or um, I don't know? Well, I think that it's not. I mean, I, obviously, I can't avoid my Irishness in my approach yeah. to writing, and that's not to <coughs> write diddly idle idle music or anything. But I think, I mean, when I think about even one of the cues that I arranged for the first, you know, day in Trinity. And I'd gone to Trinity. I remember those feelings. I do remember this, you know, I do, did identify, and I think my Irishness is probably, you know, did add something to it, um, but it wouldn't have been the be all, it wouldn't have been the most important thing about it, I would say, because the story mm. really is more, is, I would say, bigger than the Irishness. But in saying that, definitely, um, I'm sure that, you know, it is so personal, and it, a lot of this, it was so personal, and when I was scoring it, it was, or arranging it, it was so personal to me. Um, but we, I'm sure, I'm sure that there is something, there is value in it. Um, but it's hard to say in a way whether, um, you know, I don't know, maybe Steve can pick me up. What do you think? Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I mean, I would say that, uh, look, the, the, the question of Irishness is that it's, it's where, you know, I, I'm an Irish citizen, all that stuff. I would see myself as a European in a way before that, because that, when I was growing up, I couldn't wait to get away from the oppression that, of the Ireland that I grew up in. And in a way, a lot of people in my generation went away to Europe and brought back what we now refer to as a kind of a cappuccino culture where we were able to get away from uh, how small and genuinely backward a place Ireland was not that long ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, and now, look, the score is Irish because we're, it's, a, it's an Irish thing because we're all Irish. But in terms of it being an Irish, there's, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, that's, it's a modern Irish score because I'm uh, a relatively modern Irish 
composer working with, you know, it, it, to get into the idea of trying to define what that stuff is, is very problematic, I think. And I would have brought a lot of experience to, to write in those cues because I know Trinity, I would have known the beach in Sligo. I know these places. So all of that stuff bleeds into your experience. So, you know, I think if somebody had been Spanish or, or Nigerian or whatever, and had lived here for 20, 30, 40 years, they would have had a valid uh, expression of that music too. And, and, and I think uh, what, I, what I do find interesting is that I have no doubt that we can uh, bring to bear an Irish sensibility, which I think is quite interesting, you know, having grown up in this society, uh, to any project like this. But it's more look. This is a global project. This is a global. It's a it's a universal story set in a in a in an Irish setting. That's and that's what it is. And that's why it's been so 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 successful because it's about just two people and 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 uh, they're normal in the sense that they're every day. And uh, what's extraordinary in a way is their their sensibilities and their interior and their thoughts and and they're unusual people in that sense. But. Um, I think the Irish thing is, is the setting, you know, and I think what it gives it, it the, 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 there is an air around it and a peace around it and the, the, how the landscape and the city um, can set off and help the story. Uh, so all of those things would bleed into the music in a way that I can't, you know, sub subconsciously. Um, yeah. I guess it'd be worth talking to Kathleen, you're a relatively uh, new arrival here, Kathleen, but, and you've a lot of experience. Um, I wanted to say uh, just to that, I understand what uh, they're saying, Sarah and Stephen, but, and I guess I could hear the subtleties of it, maybe not identify with it as much as someone who grew up here, but certainly I think there'd be no way to limit i mean if, if someone were looking for a sound that didn't particularly have um irish roots or irish sensibilities i think that the team here could certainly certainly take care of that absolutely you know um just because uh i think if somebody from germany were to listen to this they just hear it as really great music. They wouldn't hear I it as. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I absolutely would agree. Um, and maybe that brings on to Kieran and Kathleen as well. Like, how do you think that um, music department Ireland, beyond normal people as well, how do we stand up internationally, or what are the global? Um, standard yeah the expectations yeah. i mean the expectations i think are the same you know across the board and to with regard to the irishness i mean i think we're we're probably a little bit looser in the sense that we you know with the creativity side of things and even by looser i mean uh we're not necessarily set within parameters that it, it maybe is is more uh say a British style of doing things yeah um, but from a technical point of view I mean I think we're well able to deliver what any international standards are and we have done and we you know we do it all the time uh, from my point of view with this score uh, I mean it was more about the sense of space around everything and and when I'd get the tracks from from Stephen you know they were kind of like that anyway but it was just to bring it into that kind of wider surround sound kind of world and then deliver that on it may, meant that i had a lot of space to work with anyway which was was great but yeah. uh, as far as delivery goes and i mean kathleen i'm sure will will kind of back me up in this i don't think there's any difference really for most most of us we've, we've worked with different international mm -hmm. production teams and you know yeah. whatever so it's not like anything is different yeah I, I do think there's a particular standard which is set by the studios like Hulu or you know, Netflix or, or wherever it, you know, and they have their particular standards. And I think if you get it from anywhere, it's going to be very, very, very similar. There might be little tweaks, yeah. but 
instance, I mean, like you were delivering how many breakdowns of, uh, you know, you were doing the 5.1, but then of the whole mix, but then you were doing every single instrument and variations of the instruments and, you know, Mm. Yeah, a lot of typing, you know, enough of the typing. <laughs> I got into this business for the typing, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it is. I mean, those naming conventions and all that, that the way that you technically deliver something is a bit of a pain, but it's the way you do it. And, you know, after a while, you just, it's just a routine thing. Yeah, it, it happens automatically once you start, I think, you know. Mm. And, I mean, uh, the best, the, the main thing is to actually just get into the mood of the whole piece. I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed what I really enjoyed about this was that after the fact, when we'd finished uh, and there was a Spotify score and we were on lockdown that I could go for walks with the dog late at night with nobody around and listen to it. <laughs> and uh, That was quite enjoyable, you know, because yeah. there was nobody around for maybe the first two or three weeks. Yeah, yeah until the sunshine kind of people realized that it was actually sunny out at you know and at night time it was warm so uh it was great and i really enjoyed it it was you know it was brilliant to listen to it because you don't often get that that feeling until maybe a year later when you listen back to something mm -hmm. i mean you usually hate stuff for mm -hmm. the first year at least uh, uh so that was a nice feeling you know and I think you're doing all the same things that you do on a smaller production. I mean, you know, you're 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 working to a really high standard on those anyway, and in some ways, that's almost yeah. better training because, well, from my point of view, when you work on something like normal people, you suddenly have a budget that you can work on, so that actually makes things easier, as distinct from a smaller one where everybody finds a track that they love, but we can't afford it, and then you really got to dig deep and find something. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't honestly see a difference between, you think, between yeah. Yeah, you think, sorry, we're we're ready to go. We're Music Department Ireland's ready to go. We can compete internationally and- Totally. Yeah, and we have- No doubt, yeah. I do so have a list of people questions. Are we supposed to answer questions, by the way, or type them? Um, yeah, I'm gonna just start in the questions here. So one of the first ones was, <laughs> which, um, Thought this was interesting because I found the rhythm of it must have been hard to compose to Stephen. Uh, it's a, it's an unusually paced um, piece of drama. But someone's asking, hi, how is the BPM of the score found? Was the score composed after picture lock or were they edited together? How did you make picture the score lock. hit the mark? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have Kieran and I are laughing. I, I guess Kathleen and everybody's laughing at the notion yeah. of picture. Picture lock is a misnomer. Uh, there is no <laughs> there is no picture lock anymore. They they picture lock was a thing that was used to be when you were cutting stuff on on film on celluloid film, and there would be a date at which that would all go up to the labs and stuff would be minted. But now there's a there's picture lock. There's soft lock. <laughs> So, so soft locks means not quite lock. This may be just Ireland. This may be, now this may be where Irishness comes into it. Yeah. There might be I don't know if there's a pre-soft lock, a semi-soft lock, <laughs> a hard lock. I think that's actually driving. That might be something else completely. Um, it's, it's, I've, I've actually, I, I'm sorry. I, I've never experienced that situation. Only <laughs> in that typically when it's like it's locked. It's locked, you know, sure. and, and then it goes to the um, uh, the directors and all the other people, and then they make just, you know, maybe tiny little tweaks, and then they have a super duper lock. But in this situation, it seemed like the lock was, even the day they were doing the final mix, it was still changing yeah, slightly, yeah. right? So it, was that, was, and was that the picture that was still changing or the? The picture. No. You, I think yeah, that's pretty much, yeah. How do you line up the, how do, how do you hit the marks then with the music when it's changed? Like how uh, you... It's not easy. I mean, I, like it, it's, look, one of, uh, you know, I was speaking to Len before I came on this and he, he told me to say that he was a genius. <laughs> <laughs> he, genuinely, he genuinely did. But, <laughs> but, but he, is a... he actually, he actually is. Uh, in, in, in many ways, if you think about what, you know, I mean, Hetty was on the second block and did an amazing job, but the first to, to do the first block the way he did to make, and Lenny has done it before, he's done it with, with Room, a script which a lot of directors would run a mile from because you're dealing mm. with, uh, you know, 
a very a story done on a very small scale in a way a very simple story there's no real dramatic arc a couple of kids meet the school they fall in love and they kind of come in and out of each other's lives over a couple of years you go oh yeah but who get who gets killed you get you know whatever and 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 to, to do what he does is incredible part of working with that is that everything is liquid everything is open until the very last minute and that's very difficult in a way because you work on something you work really hard you do the mix i'll make here on i'll send it off whatever and then there'll be a phone call saying listen we just need a slightly different thing we've cut 10 seconds out of that you have to do this if it's something where it's, which is a musical change then kathleen would be able to do that but if it's something that just needs that i got to go right back into it then i would mean we'd have to do that we'd have to export all the stems again all the individual instruments kieran would have to go for mix it again but that's why it's so good because that, yeah. that that rigor and openness goes across the camera department across costume across sound uh the acting which is extraordinary it just goes across and if you aren't working at at your very best you'll be found out that's that's really and that's and that's why you know it's getting all the attention it's getting is because it is really really good it's really good and and you know in the past there used to be this notion that only only the big studios in america or whatever could do stuff like that and actually it's about talent and it's about intelligence and it's about people being willing to work and to give you know everybody goes above and beyond what they're being paid for on a job like this people yeah. give an awful lot and i think that's because the material is so good because the project is so good and um uh, it's worth it you know it's worth it and when the, you know uh sorry i can't remember what the question was the question was about working was, too yeah, it's hitting, hitting yeah. The mute steve mute the mic <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um no so so the 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 picture lock uh yeah so there wasn't really a picture locked up until the very end and that's what i meant in a way when i joking at the beginning said that when COVID lockdown came it meant that we couldn't actually change the picture anymore yeah. Yeah. And you know, also, the question was like when did you compose in a way so in so you were kind of conscious sorry that was the question uh, yeah. Way, yeah 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 i was yeah i, I was <laughs> co constantly going and even i remember i think working on on we thought we'd done episode one and then we went i was on four and i had to go back to do a couple of things in one and rework stuff but i was i i have notes from, from last august i started thinking about this back in august started coming up with some ideas uh and i would yes when i see the picture any ideas i would some i some some ideas i had were were gone and then some ideas i got when i when i saw the pictures when i saw these actual characters when i saw who they were you know yeah and and the rhythm of the action. yes okay. the next question's for you juliet and i know there is actually a relevant answer in this but it's regarding the the astronomical cost of licensing some commercial music and um, why are tracks so expensive or how does that you know there's no yeah. to arrange special deals no no special deals i mean when you have library music, there's set rates, and that's great because you know what, what what things cost. There's no set fee for anything. Every time you approach a publisher or a label, you don't know what that fee is going to be, um, and it varies. Um, I don't know that they're getting more expensive. The, the time that I've been doing the job, which is maybe 10 years, I haven't noticed them more expensive, but it is costly. Uh, but what was interesting was that they talking to Maggie because she works in America and the sync environment there is much more expensive. So she was actually finding the costs that I was getting with the fees that I was being quoted surprisingly low. With the so, same time. because in the, well also because in the states they don't use the they don't use the blankets. They use a lot of they're used to using a lot of commercial music and on these these bigger productions and they budget for it. Yeah, so, so I think there would be a, a huge difference between Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan, Dylan and Bob Dylan. Yeah. yeah, like we we got some some massive quotes from some bigger artists, and then you're just going, you know, okay, well, we can't use that, you know. But certainly compared to other productions, there's more leeway, you know, um, yeah. in terms of my budget. But um, but but there are some costs you just can't you know you just there's some artists you just you can't license you know. 
right and then you yeah. just move on yeah cool um and I'll move on to the next question thank you I hope that answered it for you Donald um I, I don't think there is I mean there isn't really an answer as to why facts other than if you are Bob Dylan and you it is the only that is the only one in the world of a unique Bob Dylan track particularly if you're using both the master and the songwriter side so you can kind of name your price in a way and actually oh yeah but that's why I forgot there was a Bob Dylan track in there yeah, yeah. but it's also how open they are to things but I mean I yeah. have contacts I mean what I have is contacts um with smaller publishers so once you're going to kind of a major or bigger independent there's a minimum fee and you kind of know what you're going to roughly be quoted um but there's some spots say things that are a little bit more in the background where i would talk to i use a publisher in the uk a lot that specializes in emerging artists and that's where i would go to sometimes to find things that are a little bit cheaper um so so they're not special deals those but i know i'm not looking i'm looking at a quarter of the price of something that's signed to a major <coughs> Thank you. Um, all right, the next question is about the tone again. Did you meet the actors or did you do the characters? Actually, Stephen, I want to know, did you read the book? Uh, yes, uh, both. I read the book uh, before I knew it was going to be, uh, before I knew any, uh, Lenny had anything to do with it. And I did go, I went into Trinity when they were there doing the scene. They were shooting the scene where he pitches up uh, in Trinity and meets her again for the first time and uh, I didn't meet Daisy but I met Paul and uh, it's I it's a lovely thing when you're doing the music that you actually go and I've done it the only time I didn't get to do that on anything I've done with Lenny is uh, was Room because I, I was shot in Canada and I, I didn't get to to go uh, but it's it adds something you just get a flavor for um, I don't know. I don't know. It just helps. It just helps in some way that you get to meet the people. Now I've spoken to Daisy and Paul subsequently, you know, in the last few weeks about, about the whole thing, but I hadn't, uh, I hadn't met, you know, so yeah, so I was on yeah. set and it was nice and it helped. Cool. I think so it that, helps. that helps you to, to get the tone. If yeah. Or, I, I, or it, it, yeah, it might, it might, yeah. you know, it doesn't cool. hurt. <laughs> And uh, there's a question in, and it's something that I have to talk about as well. Like, so when you are being given a budget, so the, the music department budget, um, I know maybe some some of it came through you, Stephen, and then some yeah. of it would come from the, the kind of post-production. How do you manage a, a budget in terms of what you spend on production and and then your like your fee or you know, I'm um is it depends, it yeah. depends on, the, on, the, on the production. And again, I suppose it goes back to what Juliet was saying and uh, we would all be aware of. In, in a way, you do the same job on a short you're doing for, for nothing. So the creative thing you're bringing to it and uh, the production thing is always, um, uh, is of a very, always has to be of a very high, high standard. You have to, you know, you can't kind of take shortcuts, but sometimes you have the money to do it and sometimes you don't. So sometimes you would spend some of the money that was supposedly for the composition, but you'd spend it on the production end of it. So yeah. in, this, in this case, it didn't start out with the music department that we ended up with. Uh, so the budget that I had for the composition would have been separate to the budget for the uh, music editor and the music supervisor and for the music mixer they would have been separate they would have been a production issue okay. so I wasn't I wasn't managing that budget now I have done films where I was doing that uh, when I was head of department on a film called Frank I was in charge of the music budget I was in charge of well some of it I was in charge of being the music soup the music uh, tr teaching the actors to play I was okay. basically the, yeah. the song and dance man. Uh, I was <laughs> so there was all that, and that was that all came under the music budget because we didn't know any other way of doing it. We yeah. were a film company, and we thought, how do we do this? We go, okay, let's find a way of doing it. So much of film is about finding a way to do it, finding a way to get it over the line, and then worrying about how we could have done it, how we might have done it better later. 
but the okay. problem is you probably won't use those same things again because the next thing you do will be will have a different thing or a different feel or um yeah yeah cool and so um and what do you think Kieran? um can you hear the difference a budget makes when you're listening to music on the tv show say like um I mean, like, not really i mean I, I i think that myself and steve have worked together on a couple of projects and you know what i've been delivered say from from steve or any compro other composer you know you do what with what you have okay. um and in this case i mean we didn't have you know lots and lots of time for each episode we didn't have you know there was some times where for instance the early episodes that we were going back over they were already in the in the final dub mix at that stage so they had to be delivered delivered for the next day so i might receive the final uh pre-lock soft lock hard lock whatever you want to call it version uh and this was version three or four at this stage that uh, you may have that the day before that needed to be delivered. So you didn't really have any time. I suppose the the, the difference in, in budget terms is that we got the chance to go back and do it again, or Steve certainly got the chance mm. to go back and revisit, and Lenny got that chance as well. So from that point of view, maybe maybe the budget was was part of it. But uh, you just do what, what you have, the time you have. If you've got a day, you do it in a day. And if you've got five days all the better but you know sometimes it doesn't make any difference you just mix it i mean there was some nights i'm sure kathleen was getting emails of we transfer emails from me at you know five in the morning or six in the morning yeah. you know, I think. but but it was just because it had to be there in the dub at eight o'clock the next morning yeah you know? so so budget wise you don't really think about it while you're doing it you just do it yeah. But that's it's an important thing. Part of uh, the work that the Screen Composers Guild is involved in is the fact that composers and creators are can are are paid. Part of the funding comes in royalty return. So every time normal people is broadcast anywhere in the world, there's an income return that will come in via Imro to uh, Stephen and Sarah. And then maybe through uh, RAP as well, which is the performers for any performers and through um, a publisher for Element. So it's a, it's like having music originate in Ireland brings back a return, but I guess that's part of the funding and, and something that we're uh, engaged in is trying to maintain there, there is a fight back from some of the, the platforms to yeah. try get rid of royalties well i suppose the success of this as well I'll, sorry to cut across you the success yeah. of this as well means that you know people looking in at ireland can say okay well that was done there there was always this myth and we've had it for years and years and years i mean as long as i'm in the music business i'm sure steve will, will back yeah. me up here you know it's always oh what do they do in england or what do they do in america and there's always been this looking across the pond either side yeah and it's always better and that's from within yeah. you know from within the com the composers the musicians the bands the singers everyone well we're going to send it to the, the guy or the girl in england to mix or we're going to send it to america yeah. 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 producer or whatever and it just shows that it can be done yeah and i find that really interesting working with maggie she's like a super amazing lovely person amazing um music supervisor working at a really high level in the us and la and we all assume oh my god it's going to be this different job and you know and you're doing the exact same work like the way i would have worked was the way yeah. she worked and what you deliver is the same really and so i that really opened my eyes to the fact that actually we're, we're providing the same level of service yeah, yeah. Oh, so we probably don't feel as hard done by now it's you know <laughs> whereas before we would have doffed the cap a little bit and maybe said ah sure yeah they probably are better you know yeah. and i'll get back into my my little green box but yeah. nowadays it's you know we we definitely are well able to to work amongst anyone i mean i i, I do a lot of work with with different composers all over the world and and none of them have this attitude that we have about ourselves, you know, or, or certainly did have. And I really hope actually work. normal people can help change that because yeah. we have a very local story based here with 
the the creative talent mainly all coming from here and likewise the technical the craft talent as well which is really important and um, i'm conscious now we only have five minutes left <coughs> really quick question to you juliet where do you find the music from and did the book form a source of any of that music? Uh, i didn't we didn't end up using any tracks that were referenced in the book at one okay. point there was but we didn't i think it was a white stripes track but we i cleared it but we didn't use it um I would just do a combination of listening, just using Spotify, just listening to music. And I would, if I'm looking for a specific track for a scene, I'll do an, often do an open listen if I have plenty of time. So I'm just listening, listening, looking at the, the scene and thinking about it that way. And then um, I will also go to trusted sources like publishers and record labels um, and ones that are on particular pi price points. So I can kind of go, <laughs> I'm not going to spend too much money on that spot. I can go to that person, um, and and I go like I I actually look at sometimes I look at festival lineups and see see who's on that on smaller stages and check them out. So so it's a combination of just generally listening, and then some trusted sources, yeah, sync agents, that kind of thing. And um, thank you. And last one for you, Stephen. You've just gone sideways. <laughs> oh, have I? I was yeah. I was just I was just bored with Juliet's accident. So I was just going to play with the phone. You, you know how it is. Just... We are in the Radisson. It is half uh, twelve. Is that better? <laughs> you Stephen's just fallen over. Portrait or landscape? Which portrait is good? So That's the good. last really 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 quick question yeah. is: Do how much of the composing is MIDI versus audio, or is it mostly sample library MIDI for the sake of easier editing? That's too technical for me to understand. Uh, no, it, it, I, I, I get it. Uh, it's mostly done in Pro Tools with, with MIDI initially and some, uh, some guitar stuff I'd put in and then manipulate, put it backwards and cut it up and do stuff like that. Yeah, any of the, that there would be, actually interestingly enough, the reference Kira made earlier to the piano and Sarah, there's always big discussion around piano sounds. Lenny didn't like the piano sound that I had, which was a real piano. So we ended up going, and trying to get different samples. And Sarah, I sent the MIDI off to Sarah and Sarah did some of her magic on it and sent back her stuff, which the director loved, so. That's amazing, because I would think there's like one piano sound. But Intimate piano. Intimate piano. That's yeah. what it's called, that's what it's called, yeah. You did a fantastic- Actually, sorry, and Kathleen, Kathleen also did, uh, got a call, I think one, late one night, asking her to put her special piano sounds in as well. So everybody, there was a call out for yeah. nice piano sounds. Yeah, well, I think I do. I, the piano sounds do actually stand out. <laughs> well, I did a blind test with Lenny here, where he came up and he he listened to all the piano sounds, oh and he playing the same music, and he picked the same one that we all liked, which oh. was good. Wow, yeah. good, good. And do you think? And was that? I guess that was on your special speakers and. Well. Yeah. Well, it, well, it was, but I mean, it was still, it was, uh, Sarah had sent it, it was the one she liked, it was the one Stephen liked. I have special it was speakers too. I liked as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Sarah, uh, from <laughs> Kathleen, we all have special speakers. Like. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we've one minute to go. Thank you so, so much um, to all the attendees. Thank you very much for listening in. I hope this helped, um, I suppose, to get, uh, deliver a better understanding of what goes behind creating music for film, but also TV productions like Normal People. Um, go to Spotify, listen to those two, uh, the, the playlists that are, are there. The pink Spotify soundtrack is the one to go for. There's a couple of them because um, people can make their own playlists. Also, I'm conscious that while we have these uh, five incredibly talented people here, there is also, as you said, the, the, the 18 or so um, Irish artists and bands whose music was licensed by Juliet, so in a way they could fill here. And then also um, people in the post sound department like Steve Hannigan and Nathan, the editor, and Lenny. And you all um, really, it, it, to me, it's just joyous to see such a uh, reaction to what we all probably know, which is that there is wonderful creative talent in Ireland. <laughs> And with investment and faith, you can really produce something of enormous value that, you know, was being watched in the Kardashians' house, which is kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> Arrived. <laughs> Everyone in their leisure wear. 
anyway thank you so much uh thank you Ray. I, I i think ray will kick us all out now in a minute um and i'm really looking forward to being in galway next year yes yes but thank you kathleen flynn thank you sarah lynch thank you kieran Byrne. thank you Stephen Rennick. thank you juliette martin kieran sarah Stephen, and kathleen are all uh, members of the screen composers guild you can learn more about the Guild at screencomposersguild.ie and any any questions, please email and um, we're always happy to talk about music department in Ireland. And Juliet is on silverstreammusic.ie. Silverstreammusic.ie. All right. Thanks a million. Bye. 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 Bye.